Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. Last season we discussed some of the various ways in which God is good or excellent. There are, of course, others, like his omnipotence or his perfect love, but we can come back to that topic later on. For now, I thought it would be a good idea to look at a topic that seems to be a major stumbling block for a lot of unbelievers, finding a basis for knowledge and general thought. It's no surprise that this topic is difficult and confusing to many people, since, unlike a lot of the topics we've discussed, it's not a straightforward matter of being able to point to one solution as right and all the others as incorrect. However, to understand why this is, it helps to know what's meant by a basis. I know that my computer screen is right in front of me. My basis for saying this is that I can see the screen with my eyes, and I'm not getting any contrary evidence to indicate that it's not there. A basis is whatever reason you have to believe that your knowledge is true, and people can pick up and use a wide range of bases to defend their views. Some bases are better than others because they explain more of the evidence or explain it better. But that doesn't mean that a basis is useless just because it isn't the most efficient one available. It can still lead one to truth. For example, the belief that I can trust my eyes explains why I believe in things I've seen. But it doesn't explain why I think my eyes can be trusted. To explain that, I need another basis. This is because we should, ideally, only believe things that we have justifiable reasons to believe. Believing things based on good reasons not only helps protect us from doubt and helps us stay informed, the ultimate goals of all learning, but also makes it simpler for us to explain to others precisely why we believe what we do. Also, if we're being honest, every belief that we have either has a good reason to exist or it doesn't. If it doesn't, then any attempt at a defense of that position will end up being irrational. One thing I've discovered as I've talked with unbelievers online is a practice that many of them engage in, which I call terminal undercutting. This means that a person is presented with a conclusion that they wish to escape from, so they question the reality of something on which the conclusion depends. Once the reality of that thing is proven, they then question the reality of the basis for that proof, and so on and so forth along a line of bases and proofs until they get back to the most basic of all claims, the reality of truth. I have had no less than 15 people tell me straight out that there's no such thing as truth and ask me to assume that statement were true. The problem is, if the statement were true, it would undercut their own position, as well as a great deal more, since no statement can be true unless truth exists. Clearly, this is no way to organize our thoughts. We've got to start with an indisputable reality to base conclusions on, or we'll end up just like these people, terminally undercutting whenever we hear something we don't like and want to escape from it. What should we pick to use as our basis of knowledge? One that I've heard a lot about recently, which can lead to some good conclusions and beliefs in its own right, is the concept of the properly basic belief, a belief so obvious to you that it doesn't need to be backed up by reasons. The problem is that what's obvious to one person may not be obvious to another. What's to prevent a person from saying that the moon being made of green cheese is a basic belief for them? Clearly, we need some firm criteria to unambiguously govern what's basic and what isn't. The best solution that I've been able to find to this is to essentially turn terminal undercutting on its ear, to say that if a claim leads to absurd contradictions, it must be false, and if a belief is self-contradicting, statements that negate that belief must be true. For example, if I say, truth is not true, that statement doesn't hold up, because even if it's true, it's false, and therefore it must not be true. Therefore, we know that truth is true. In fact, I'd say this is the most basic of all beliefs, since all other beliefs hinge upon it being true. Once we have a basis for our knowledge and our thoughts, we can move on to drawing conclusions from that basis, and not need to live our lives in continuous doubt and ignorance. So, we know that things are what they are, and they aren't what they aren't. Those simple truths form a good basis, giving our thoughts a firm foundation from which to branch out and start drawing further conclusions. But that's for later. Next time, how can we use this basis to master logic? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.